Last year I really started to get into uh, self-filming hunts and uh, if you haven't tried it I'll, I'll let you know it's extremely difficult but it is pretty fun and it's always cool to go back and be able to relive your hunts, watch them, watch them again and show other people you know exactly what was going on in those hunts but um, the way I started out was through a stabilizer mount that attaches right to your bow and your camera uh, attaches right to that. Uh, and that's a pretty easy way to start out self-filming, but it has a lot of disadvantages to it, which I, I went over in a different video, and I kind of did a comparison between a stabilizer mount like that and a camera arm. And I made a camera arm completely out of wood, uh, which really isn't that functional uh, because wood swells and uh, it kind of froze up on me and stuff like that. But... Um, the reason I made it was just to try out a camera arm and see if I wanted to move to the next level of self-filming. Uh, and I figured out last year that I, I really did like using a camera arm. And I think this year I'm going to try using a couple different angles. Uh, have a camera on the camera arm and have a camera on the stabilizer mount. So that, that should be pretty cool and I'll hopefully be able to get the best of both worlds uh, while doing that. So today I'm set up here. I got all the uh, stuff to make a uh, aluminum camera arm that should be able to last and function for a very long time. So uh, I was able to get, pick up all this stuff for I think under 25 bucks and it's a really good way to uh, keep it cheap because camera arms are ridiculously expensive. So I'm going to go ahead and get to it and I'll show you how I make my own uh, homemade camera arm. Alright, so the first thing I got to do is cut this aluminum square tubing that I got. This is a three quarter inch square by three feet long. Uh, it's pretty cheap. You can get it at a hard, in pretty much any hardware store probably. Uh, I'm going to cut it into three pieces that will all fold on each other. Um, and you would think, you know, pretty easy math, you would just cut it into three sections that are one foot long, but um, if you do that, then the bolts down through the end of them will interfere with each other, so they won't be able to overlap on top exactly on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is cut the first one at 13 inches, then 12 inches, then uh, 11 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here's my three pieces. I took them over to the disc sander, uh, squared this edge, bolt well, all the edges off that I cut, and uh, knocked off all the burrs. So they're ready for drilling holes to attach them and put the bolts through. Alright, so I got all the holes drilled. Uh, I had to round out this a little bit so the bolt would fit through there. And I'm using nylon washers in between each metal to metal connection. And that way, so when I get this bolt in there, tighten it down, um, it will reduce any noise that would have happened between that connection. Uh, and it makes it really fluid. When I tighten that down, it'll, it'll be able to move and then stop in a certain position and not drift on me. Uh, I have to use one of these large washers I think just on this connection because uh, the threads end and I don't think I would have been able to tighten this nut down correctly without that spacer just using it as a spacer. The nuts I'm using uh, are lock nuts so when I tighten them uh, to a certain point that gives me enough friction that this will stop and stay where it's at um, while I'm moving this, the connection, the nut won't loosen on me and then eventually do something like this. So. All 
All right, so I got all the connections tightened down, and you can kind of start to see how this is going to work. And uh, it feels really nice. It's pretty smooth. Um, really hardly any noise to it. So I think it's going to work really well. Uh, next, next thing to do, um, I bought this tripod on eBay for like, I think it was like seven or eight bucks. Uh, it is a really cheap one but all we're really looking for on it is the head. So I'm gonna pull this off. That comes right out. And I think I'm gonna end up cutting this right here and we'll figure out a way to mount this on the top of here. All right, so I drilled a large hole in the top only and it fits this fits down in there pretty nicely um, has a little bit of movement in there but that's okay I think um, I, by drilling only in the top that allows this to still swing over the bottom piece there um, it may come in handy at some point but next I'm just gonna drill through both the tubing and this piece and bolt from side to side right across here that should tighten that up and if there's still any wiggle um, I may just end up putting a bead of epoxy on there or something uh, so that's the plan All right, so I got that drilled out, and I drilled it out for this screw, which has a nut, and give it a shot. See how it goes through. Goes all the way through, and tighten that down just a little bit, and we'll see how that feels. There is a little bit of wiggle still in it. I may have to run a bead of epoxy there. Alright, so the next step is just getting it attached to the tree. And so all I'm doing here is uh, this bracket fits really nicely on the short side of a 2x4. So um, I ripped this 2x4 to about the size of a 2x2. And um, these carriage bolts came with this bracket. So uh, I'm just going to drill a hole through here and attach this carriage bolt through there. So in order to get this really snug up against this face, um, I'm going to use a bolt here and get the general placement of the hole and I'm going to drill just a little bit to the right of that. Now and this bolt goes through, should suck it right over. And that makes that a really tight fit there. All right, so one of the last things I'm gonna do is account for if uh, the tree is actually leaning one way or the other. So if the tree is leaning this way, then my camera arm will be drifting downward. So what I'm going to do here is drill a hole and I'll through, put some all thread through here and uh, I'll sink a nut into this wood and what I'll do is uh, tight, as I tighten this all thread it'll push against the tree and push my camera arm back out level um, and that way I won't have drift in my camera arm. Alright, so now that that nut's in there, I'll take this piece of all thread through the hole, 
and it starts to come out the other side. The other thing I have is this cap. Um, I found it in my yard. Not sure what it came off of, but that's why I chose this size all thread. Because this fits right on there. It'll tighten right down. And I'll be able to really get on that um, and use that as a handle to push this into the tree. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, I am going to put a little bead of this JB Quick Weld around this and that'll really uh, solidify that, that joint and it won't move at all. All right, so the JB weld cured overnight, so that's really hard. There's no movement in the head anymore, um, and it functions pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, one other thing I did last night was because this nut sticks down lower than this um, and it can't slide over, it hit against there and would, and would really make a tinking noise. So all I did was wrap a rubber band around it. Um, doesn't make much noise if I do accidentally hit so uh, the last thing really that needs done here is just paint it so uh, get rid of some of this glare and shiny metal um, I think I'm just gonna paint it black and maybe do a little camo stuff so first thing uh, before painting I'm using this is 150 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna rough up the aluminum so that hopefully the paint sticks a little better all right, so I roughed up the aluminum and uh, ran some paint thinner over it just to clean up the surface and uh, hopefully we get a good coating of paint that sticks really well. So I'm going to go do that and uh, I'll bring it back when it's done. All right, so here it is finished. Uh, I painted it flat black and then just some, put some green stripes on it. So uh, it took away some of the shine and that should camouflage it just fine. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the tree. Alright, so here's the setup on the tree. Um, right now I'm using a pole strap, uh, but I recommend using a ratchet strap. I have a small ratchet strap that I'm going to use, but it's actually up in the tree right now. I just left it in the tree. So, um, th this doesn't really get it tight enough. A uh, ratchet strap really gets it a lot tighter. And, um, there's a little bit of movement sometimes if you use one of these. Right now I have it pretty secured, but uh, sometimes there's movement if you use one of these pole straps instead of an actual ratchet strap. But um, anyway, here's the setup and uh, you can see this is about, this is probably a little higher than I would have it in my tree stand just because um, if I was sitting down then I need to be able to uh, work it as well. So right here is a little too high for sitting down, but other than that it's, not, it's at a decent height and you can mess with that for whatever you feel and uh, one thing that I do want to mention is that these these bolts you would think that all three of them would be tightened at the same uh, torque but really as you go down this is you want this one to be uh, the loosest torque uh, then medium then uh, the tightest because when you pull here you have one foot basically of uh, of arm or lever uh, that will act on this to spin it. When you pull and you have this extended and you turn like that, you have three feet. Um, so this one needs to be a lot tighter because otherwise when you're moving around, uh, this one would be way too tight because you only have that one, le one foot of lever on this, whereas you have two feet here and three feet here. Um, only this one would move if it was the it would, if they were all the same torque. Um, but anyway, uh, this design is working really well. Um, you know, if there's any kind of uh, angle on the tree, I can tighten this and it'll push into the tree, and uh, that would pull this up or loosen it and bring it down. Uh, that works really well. And um, I know only one of these, the first arm has the capability of going all the way around because of the bolts. Um, but I, 
but the first arm is really important. Uh, the second arm uh, is not a big deal. When I get it down here, it can't rotate all the way around, but uh, I showed that rubber band that I put on there. And that's okay as is because, um, say there's a deer to my right, uh, I can just go behind and, and point it that way. Um, but the three arms works really well as, um, also because you can really get it around you. If there's a deer way over here, I can point this over here and it's pointed down that way and I can get in my, uh, you know, still get in full draw and take the shot. So the three arms works really well in that manner. Um, there is a little bounce to it, but as long as you're careful and you make sure to make fluid even motions and stop and let go really easily, uh, it's pretty steady. So all in all, uh, I'm pretty happy with this design and I think it's going to work really well. Uh, I had it in the woods already once before I painted it uh, just to test it out, see how it worked and uh, it worked out great. So I hope you found this useful and helpful. Um, if you do make one of these, uh, hopefully you'll get some good footage of your hunts uh, and you can share it with everybody. Uh, but thanks for watching and good luck out there.